Right, so, Trucker and Munna. There's a name we haven't heard from a while. It's a blast from the past, isn't there? We haven't seen that permanently stuck in the air nose, bleating his Blairite hopes and dreams for a while, not since he flounced out of labour, refusing to follow the lead of then-party boss one Jeremy Corbyn. But he then helped set up and join the ill-fated Change UK, or the funny tinge party as they came to be known, after fellow political has-been Angela Smith made a car crash awful comment on the BBC about people who identify as BAME as having a funny tinge to their skin. Her and Chucky were just two of the Change UK lot, though. Smith herself is now on the board of a privatised water company as a non-executive director, which might explain her historical aversion to renationalizing the stuff when she was still an MP. And of course, these are all the same people now telling you to back Keir Starmer, asking you to back Labour now. But there's no escape in the fact that when we could have had a transformative Labour government, they chose to walk away from all of that. It's not a Labour government they want. It's a red Tory government. Anyway, we've touched on Angela Smith's links to privatised public services, and that might explain why her Labour in name only version of government would never do it when they were in power before. So how about Chucky? He is the person I brought up at the start of this ramble, so I better get to the point when it comes to him. You see, Chucky Ramona, unlike Angela Smith, had never been pro-privatisation whilst he was an MP. And one of the bigger issues he railed against was the sell-off of Royal Mail, who are, as we know right now, in the fight of their lives. The CWU union is doing an absolutely belting job calling the dirty tactics of Royal Mail and their CEO, Simon Thompson, out for the rotten deal that they're trying to force on their workers, from below inflation pay rises to redundancies further down the line. And of course, all the strike action we've seen as ordinary posties fight back against that, wanting a fair day's pay for a fair day's work, as do we all. Stand by your post, always. Amuno was against all of this, despite being a blatantly right-wing politician. In 2014, Amuno told then Business Secretary and subsequently Lib Dem leader Vince Cable, the man behind the plans to sell it off for all those Lib Dem supporters now with short memories, saying the public had been disgracefully shortchanged to the tune of hundreds of millions of pounds, and added that those Cable referred to as spivs and gamblers are laughing all the way to the bank. Well, they indeed were. Royal Mail was undervalued, sold off cheaply, bought up for a song by investors, many of whom quickly sold the shares off again, but closer to their actual worth and made a quick killing off the back of it. This is all money we the public were shortchanged off. We the public lost another one of our public services, something that was ours, as the Tories with their Lib Dem enablers again sold the family silver. But eight years have passed, the service has gone into debt, the investment privatisation always promises yet never delivers has not been delivered, should have given it to a postie, excuse the pun, and those who work in the service are getting screwed. So what of a Munna now in all of this? Well, after his political career ended, he went to work for JP Morgan, the investment bankers, the sort of post-politics position most Tories will readily accept, and Red Tory Chucky was no exception. But is he still speaking out against the Royal Mail privatisation? Is he supporting the strikes? Is he saying a big fat, I told you so, and demanding it all be renationalised? Don't be silly. It's no longer in his interest to do that. You see, there's this Czech billionaire. Yes, one of those again, called Daniel Kretinsky, for whom Amuna is one of a team of bankers looking after his British business interests at JP Morgan, advising Kretinsky via his firm Visa Equity Investment, based out of Luxembourg, not Czechia for, you know, tax reasons, presumably, which happens to have a 23% stake in Royal Mail's parent company, International Distribution Services. Kretinsky also has a 10% stake in Sainsbury's and owns part of West Ham Football Club, in case you were interested. Well, Kretinsky is looking at taking a bigger slice of the Royal Mail pie, and where Amuna was staking his name and reputation as a politician on fighting privatisation of our postal service, being a right-winger, he evidently never meant a word of it. It was about opposing government, but only for his own ambitions, eyeing up a route to a position of power himself when Labour's turn again came, the sad, inevitable consequence of our electoral system. Corbyn screwed up his five-year plan, of course, so he flounced out of Labour, went on a Change UK ego trip, which failed when it became apparent nobody liked them. He then went to the Lib Dems briefly, a party he said he'd never forgive for selling Royal Mail. But that didn't stop him sharing a bench with Vince Cable before losing his seat entirely, and deservedly so, ending the political career, at least thus far, of a god-awful self-serving politician. He then was able to set himself up amongst people he genuinely belonged with, like a bunch of investment bankers cashing in on privatisation because... Hypocrisy doesn't matter to such folk. I suppose money talks louder. And when you seem to have no principles to speak of, 
You can always make up new ones. Anyway, the man who once championed Royal Mail as a public service is now helping a billionaire buy more of it. It's people like Amuna who are sadly running Labour again now. This is why more and more people are saying, despite the awful Tory government that we still have, that they can't back Starmer's Labour either. If Amuna wanted to make a political return, he'd be parachuted in somewhere by Team Keith in a heartbeat. 